channel or welcome back if you've been here before in case this is your first time watching one of my videos hi i'm leslie i'm so glad to have you here and welcome to another vlog so today's vlog is a one day vlog which is fairly rare for me at least when it comes to my london vlogs but i think i have enough uh, on my plate for today that um, i should be able to fill a vlog easily so i have let's say mm, three maybe two depending on timing three items um, on my to-do list for today and um, so the first two items are definites and uh, i'm gonna head out the door to the first one of them like once i'm done filming this intro but um, i'm going to two auction houses not to partake in any kind of bidding wars um, especially not at those places where i'm going to i don't have that kind of money i'm going to sotheby's and bonhams first off bonhams because um, they open up earlier than sotheby's does and for both auction houses the reason why i'm going is that they have exhibitions going on for future auctions so at Bonhams I think in October ish so like the beginning of October they're going to auction off a ton of items from Roger Moore's personal collection so if you're into 007 and James Bond you're in for a treat and they have a selection of the items that they have for auction out on display like as an actual exhibition I did see a couple of photos but I didn't want to spoil it too much for me so yeah it did look like a proper exhibition so I'm gonna check that out first and then I'm gonna head to Sotheby's because at Sotheby's I don't know about the timing but sometime in the near -ish future they're gonna auction off a bunch of items from Freddie Mercury's personal collection and I did walk past Sotheby's like a week or so ago and the line to get inside the exhibition wrapped around the entire blog. So I'm really looking forward to it, planning to go early and to avoid the crowds, hopefully, or uh, yeah, at least not wait like two hours um, in the queue. But yeah, those two items are definitely on my to-do list. And the third item, depending on the timing, so both Bonhams and Sotheby's are on New Bond Street, which is fairly close to yeah, Piccadilly, that kind of area, and also Burlington Arcade. And inside Burlington Arcade are a bunch of different stores. Um, I think they have a Strathbury, um, a lot of like heritage old boutiques, um, like shoemakers, watches and everything. And I hope I'm pronouncing their name correctly, La Lage Beaumont. So a handbag brand. And um, if you watched Handbag Colleague, you might be familiar with that brand. I hadn't heard of them before she mentioned uh, the brand in her videos. But yeah, I got asked by a couple of you actually to check out, um, yeah, what their bags are about. Probably try on a few, um, let DSAs introduce the brand to me, I guess. I've walked past a number of times and usually the boutique is fairly empty. Um, or like not like overly busy at least so maybe fingers crossed they'll allow me to film so th that's why I like the third item being La Lage Beaumont is kind of like up in the air because I can't promise uh, that I'll be able to film a lot but if I am that's also going to go in this vlog but um, yeah before I ramble on any further let's head out the door I'm wearing <laughs> kind of like my usual thing so leggings black top some kind of blazer and today I'm wearing my um, Chanel medallion tote which I adore. Unfortunately, the resale prices on the pre-love market have skyrocketed. I would love to own a second one, maybe like a beige clair or even a red or one of the pinky shades or even like another um, black one because uh, I'm increasingly getting more hesitant to wear it because like wear and tear and everything is not like an item that you can easily replace. But um, anyway, <laughs> I'm rambling way too much. Let's go. Okay, um, it's half past nine and I noticed I might have to switch my plans around because I'm standing in front of Sotheby's and there's already a line and they don't open until 11, I want to say. Jeez, okay, I wasn't expecting that much of a hype when it comes uh, to the exhibition, but oh well. <laughs>
All right, so a few key facts about the exhibition and the auction afterwards. The exhibition runs until the 5th of September. I'm trying my best to get this video edited as quickly as possible. So by the time that this vlog goes up, you will at least have one weekend left to check out the exhibition if you're interested. Um, side note, as you will have noticed at the beginning of the vlog, definitely come early if you can. Um, yeah, either way, even if you arrive super early, you will have to wait in line. It's just the name of the game, but entry is free and I'd say it's 100% worth it. I kind of showed you a few glimpses of the first half of the exhibition. It's on two floors. The exhibition ends on the 5th of September and on the 6th of September is the start of the auction. So it's a multi-day auction, which again makes sense because there's so much up for auction, like tiny little items, um, which no doubt will um, go for extortionate prices regardless of their size but also like two pianos one on the ground floor which was estimated to go for 40 to 60 thousand which is a bargain compared to the piano that you'll see in a couple of minutes um yeah the one on the first floor is the one that he actually composed on and that's estimated to go for anywhere between two to three million pounds. So the auction begins on the 6th of September with an evening sale then you have another on stage sale on the 7th on the 8th as well, 8th is like more so like home items, furniture and all that. And I believe the Japan collection as well as like tiny uh, like knickknacks, crazy little things, I think um, they call it, runs until the 11th, 12th and 13th of September, depending on which kind of category you're interested in. So yeah, that's kind of the scope of uh, the auction. So yeah, very extensive, as is the exhibition. So I'd highly recommend you check it out and yeah, the ground floor was interesting-ish. There were some like, like a lot of furniture pieces and a lot of like the Japan collection, but I'd say the standout floor is definitely the first floor. There were a lot of like original, like handwritten notes um, from Freddie Mercury while he was kind of drafting, is it the term that you use when it comes to music? Those pages were in like glass displays, beautifully lit. And there was a huge selection of outfits. And one thing, tiny little detail, but it definitely added to the whole feel and showcases how much like effort and time probably Sotheby's put into the exhibition. The mannequins had like, um, not like your standard run of the mill H&M kind of faces, although I think H&M doesn't even do faces. They just like cut off the head entirely. But yeah, Sotheby's went all out. Out and the mannequins had actually like a face that resembled Freddie Mercury, which I think is such a unique touch. I just got done at the exhibition. I really hope you enjoyed me taking you along. It was like a full on museum, really impressive. So many items from his personal collection. I mean, granted, uh, Freddie Mercury and Queen was a little before my time, but I still really enjoyed looking at all the items. And yeah, it was like beautifully laid out and beautifully displayed and lit and uh, yeah, really impressed, especially considering that it's free to go inside, which yeah, is great. Okay, it wasn't completely free for me at the end of the day because um, at the end of the exhibition they do have a tiny little gift shop and uh, the selection wasn't uh, like super impressive but they do have a dedicated book like a full-on coffee table book with pretty much like all the items that are up for auction. Way too heavy for me to consider buying that because at the end of uh, my time in London I will need to lug everything that I purchase back home so I passed on the coffee table book but I purchased a reusable tote bag like a cloth one and uh, to be very honest like the main reason why I even purchased the tote bag I'm going to show you the bag later on is uh, because of the shopping bag which is like um, yeah dedicated like 
specifically for this exhibition, which is kind of special. And I do love myself some good packaging. So I got that. And now I'm headed to the Roger Moore or like James Bond exhibition. And yeah, let's see what that exhibition is about. <laughs> Okay, so I just got done at Barnum, so yeah, the Roger Moore exhibition, let me quickly uh, stand right here because talking and walking um, isn't my forte. Anyway, so it was way tinier than the Freddie Mercury exhibition, but she said that it's only like a teaser essentially. So the collection that's on display right now that you saw in the clips is kind of like the teaser, like, like the highlights, and that's going to travel to LA next for display there, I guess, because of course you can bid on the items from basically anywhere. I think she mentioned like 4th or like 5th of October going forward that's when the actual like bidding starts and like a couple days prior they will have the entire selection all the items that are up for auction uh, they will have on display inside uh, Bonham so maybe if timing works out I'm definitely gonna go back because um, yeah even now with the limited selection there were some really impressive pieces quick look at Chanel I don't think I've been inside a Chanel boutique in London yet I don't know um Chanel in British pounds is probably even more expensive than a euro, so I don't really see a point. And uh, yeah, just to go inside and look and be told off uh, for trying to film isn't something <laughs> I do for fun. But uh, yeah, let's look at some of the items on display. Sorry about the like reflection in the windows. It's always quite the struggle, but oh god, I would love a white Chanel bag, but... Even with white jeans, I can't really be trusted, so um, let's not even consider a white leather bag, which at this point in time, those will be like four grand, five grand. So the SA inside La Lagie Beaumont was perfectly fine with me filming, we had a nice chat and she kind of like introduced me to the brand, showed me all the different styles. They do have uh, like not a huge selection of different kind of styles, they do focus on I'd say like a handful, maybe six or seven handbag styles and the ones that I was drawn to were the very much like Kelly inspired ones. So there's the Maya which has like a little more intricacy I'd say, like with sangles even more um, reminiscent of the Kelly and then there's the Fontaine which is also beautiful but like I'd say a little easier to open even because it only has like one clasp that you have to lift up essentially and I'd say most of the bags come in various different kinds of leathers so for instance I took a look at the Maya bag in yeah I guess a leather that is very reminiscent of Epsom leather yeah so like more grained and like stiffer but they also had like softer leathers like pebbled leathers essentially and of course they also have croc embossed all of their like croc looking bags 
don't quote me on it, but I think all of their croc looking bags are actually just like looking like crocs or croc embossed calf leather, I guess. But they do carry exotics uh, limited to snake skins, which were also very reasonably priced. I mean, I'm not like super knowledgeable when it comes to like price ranges when it comes to snake skin, but um, yeah, so they have python for sure, and then like one or two other types of uh, snake skins that are not as delicate i'd say for instance like the black and white uh, fontaine that i tried on that is also snake skin printed of course uh, or like painted um, over like in a black and white pattern but yeah that was snake skin from my understanding i'd say their pricing when it comes to exotics is um, very hard to beat I had the loveliest time at, okay, let me try to pronounce it correctly. I did ask. It's La La Guy Beaumont. Um, so apparently that's based on the name of a fancy British lady. That's uh, what the SA told me. And I'm going to believe her on that. So La La Guy Beaumont. Um, maybe that's, that used to be a French name, but over time British people uh, kind of made it easier to pronounce for them. So there we go. And yeah, I did, I did ask if I was able to film. I also mentioned that I know the brand from Handbag Colleagues or so Steph. Uh, thank you for introducing me to it. And uh, yeah, I was able to film and yeah, the SA was so lovely. And I tried on a couple of bags and um, I think, okay, one of them is called Maya and the other style is fairly similar, but I can't recall the name. I would have inserted the name of the bags um, that I tried on, but of course, most of them are like fairly Kelly inspired, but yeah, inspired, not like dupes or anything like that. They do have like their own heritage. Granted, they were founded in 2004, so fairly new-ish when it comes to like compare that to like heritage uh, brands like Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, but still they've been in business for a couple of years for sure. And their bags are really beautiful. And considering that they're made in Italy or France, I think either they're fairly affordable, affordable in quotation marks. We know we're talking about luxury and leather bags, but I think you get what I'm saying. Oh, the lighting is way better that way. So <laughs> here we are. And uh yeah, the inside of the bags, or at least most of them, I didn't look into every single bag, but it looked like um, suede and yeah, very well made. And all of the bags come with a shoulder strap, which definitely helps. Yeah, they also had twillies. I think the twillies are priced at 95 pounds or 90 pounds, which I think is decent because I mean, it's silk and they did feel really soft. So yeah, really enjoyed checking out the bags and that was like such a fun day out and it's like, I think it's noon at this point, but I did do quite a lot already. So yeah, I mean, I'm currently facing Fortnum and Mason. Um, I might pop by just to walk around. Uh, chances are it's fairly crowded already because as I said, noon, but uh, yeah, Fortnum and Mason is always so lovely, but uh, yeah. And I'm gonna catch you when I'm back at home because I still have to show you what I purchased at the Freddie Mercury exhibition. So I'm back home, let me quickly show you what I got and then I'm gonna finish this vlog off because despite it only being like, well, half a day, I think uh, this might be a bit of a long one because I mean, I did cover like three separate items and the exhibitions at the auction houses were amazing. But yeah, talking about auction houses, this is what got me. Let me come closer. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I do love myself a good uh, bit of packaging and this is definitely very special. So let me get it out one-handedly. Okay, so we, okay, maybe you know, maybe you don't. Um, I'm a sucker for a good mug. So if they had had mugs, I would have probably gone for a mug, but um, yeah, this one and the like coffee table book were the only options. Yeah, this is the front, that's the back or the other way around, depending on what you prefer. So um, yeah, got myself a little 
tote bag. Not that um, I needed it, but um, here we are. Anyway, so I think uh, I'm gonna love you, leave you, and I really hope you enjoyed today's vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, also ring that little bell because I don't know how I'm going to like structure my uploading schedule, but um, at the time of recording this, it's the end of August and I still have two, one and a half vlogs from July left to edit. I don't know. I, I didn't manage to get any editing done over the last couple of weeks, uh, I'd say. Oh, okay. I mean, I did uh, kind of like prioritize shopping vlogs, but I'm determined to get my London vlogs out as well and this vlog um, too. So yeah, be on the lookout for the vlogs to come. Fingers crossed I will get some editing done this weekend. And yeah, really hope you enjoyed today's vlog. Again, thumbs up. Any kind of interaction, comments. Have you been to any of the exhibitions? Are you a 007 fan? Um, as I mentioned, I will probably return to Bonhams in October once like the full selection and everything that's on auction is on display. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the little like glimpse. And uh, also inside Bonhams, especially compared to Sotheby's, it was so quiet. I was basically by myself most of the time uh, in the exhibition room. That definitely wasn't the case when it comes to Freddie Mercury um, and the exhibition at Sotheby's, but enjoyed both. Uh, loved checking out bags at La Lagi Beaumont. And uh, yeah, there we go. Before I keep you any longer, thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to see you in my next vlog. Bye.